<laughs> well, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. That's great. Great. Uh, how about you? Uh, we're we're okay here in the southern tier. We've been doing um doing okay. Um, Governor Pataki, thanks so much for uh, for being a part uh, for agreeing to do this interview. We really really appreciate it. Um, a lot's been going on over the last uh, you know few weeks, almost a month. Yes. Uh, what's yes. your take? What's your take on this this whole coronavirus pandemic? You know, it's just been uh, something that I don't think anyone anticipated. Uh, and uh, one of the things that troubles me, Zach, is uh, when you look at the briefings and the press questions, it's all trying to blame somebody for something, uh, one or the other. And the fact is, we're, are, we're where we are right now. And the critical thing in a crisis is to forget about who's going to ultimately get the blame for what should have been done or what might have been done. It's dealing with the crisis right now. So mm -hmm. making sure that there's communication, making sure that our frontline hospital and health workers have all the equipment they have, making sure that we're getting as many tests out as possible in the Southern tier and across the state so people can have some idea as to how widespread this actually is. Uh, let's focus on dealing with the crisis, getting this behind us and rebuilding our economy. And come November during the elections, we can figure out who should have done what when. Yeah, you uh, served during one of the biggest crises this country's ever faced, 9-11. Uh, and, and it seems like when that happened, Democrats and Republicans really came together. Uh, is that happening now? You know, Dave, uh, Zach, I think that is one of the most important questions that can be asked. After September 11th, it was a horrible time and terrible loss of life. But Americans came together, as I've never seen in my lifetime. There weren't Republicans or Democrats, North or South, Black or White. We were just Americans, and we've been attacked. Uh, and in fact, my book that I wrote that's coming out tomorrow, Beyond the Great Divide, is exactly about that, uh, how we came together then and how divided we are now. And I would hope that in a time of crisis like this, people would put aside their political benefit and simply function on what is right for the American people. But sadly, in Washington, uh, the ideological and partisan divide is so great uh, that even in the midst of this crisis, while government is still trying to take the next critical steps to save lives and to get us back on our feet, there's too much political posturing. And, you know, they're encouraging signs, like the, the third stimulus bill, the $2.2 trillion that came through. Sure, Democrats put things in there the Republicans didn't want. And Republicans put things in there the Democrats didn't want. But at the end, they all said, we have to get this done. We have to work together as Americans. And they passed the bill. And it's imperfect, but it's a huge step in the right direction. And as we look forward now, let's use that as the model. You know, sure, we're going to try to get things that we believe in as part of our next stimulus or as part of any program out of this. But put aside the partisanship. Focus on what's right for the American people. We're still in a crisis. We're in a health care crisis that may or may not be peaking in the New York area now. But we're going to be in an economic crisis for months at least to come. So try to put aside the politics. <coughs> That's an I know you're good. Excellent point there. Uh, it seems um, Governor Cuomo has really taken a forefront in this crisis. Um, what is your overall take of how he's handling it as governor of New York? Uh, I think the governor has done a very good job in the communications. The briefings have been enlightening and helpful to people who want to be informed and know what's going on. Um, one thing that I learned on September 11th, and I write about in the book, actually, is how important it is for government to cooperate at all levels of government. You can't have the city and the state of New York not communicating and not cooperating. You can't have the state of New York and the federal government not cooperating. On September 11th, I made the most important decision of my 12 years as governor. Rudy Giuliani called me in the afternoon and said that he was setting up a temporary emergency command post in lower Manhattan. I thought for a minute and I said, I'll be right down. And I brought my entire emergency response team to the same room that the city and the mayor's emergency response team were at. And for the days and weeks and months thereafter, we were in this one giant conference room so that there was never 
well, the city, I thought you were supposed to do this, or the state, I thought you were going to go that, or no, that's your responsibility. We were constantly working together every day, every minute of every day, to have a coordinated response. And the idea now that the city and the state uh, don't even talk about whether or not the schools are going to reopen, to me, is very discouraging because it's a crisis. You mm -hmm. set aside personality, you set aside politics, you do what's right. Yeah, it seems that you and uh, former Mayor Giuliani really did work together, especially during that 9-11 time. What would you, what kind of message would you have uh, then for Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo and uh, Bill de Blasio? You, you just have to communicate constantly. Uh, you just, every single day, you should be talking to each other at least four or five times a day. What do you need? Uh, what is going right? What do you need more help on? Uh, what are you thinking down the road? So that they know exactly what each other needs, what each other's proposing to do, and they can coordinate actions going forward. It can't just be the city acting one way and the state acting some way different. They have to work together. And that's the case with the federal government, too. You know, we had this one room in the command center in the evening of September 11th when the federal officials, FEMA, came in. They went into that same room at that same conference table. So we had a seamless response, federal, state, city, uh, under very, very difficult circumstances. Uh, and I would hope that uh, New York, the federal government, the city of New York, would do a better job of just constantly communicating and coordinating the response. Yeah, speaking of the federal level, how about uh, the president and the task force? Uh, do you think there's, you know, he's gotten, you mentioned earlier before, he's gotten praise, he's also gotten criticism on um, his handling so far of the coronavirus crisis. What's your take so far on the president? Well, I think uh, you, you said it right. He's gotten praise and he's gotten criticism. Some of the things were very positive. Some of the things he has laid out there informing the American people and steps that he's taken have been very positive. But I'll tell you one thing I, that just really I find unfortunate is the interaction with the press, where the press is playing, I got you. You know, I'm going to ask you a question to try to get you riled up and to embarrass you or to say something we disagree with. This is not the time for that. This is the time to try to come to the right decisions, inform the American people in the best way possible. I think the briefings that Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks have given have been outstanding. I know I watch them because I learn uh, and I get guidance as to what is the appropriate thing. And that's what this should be about, informing the public what's happening, why it is happening, what steps the public itself should take, and what we're looking at down the road. And so less of the give and take, less of the trying to, I got you, or why didn't you do this in February? It's April. Let's talk about what we're doing today and what we have to do tomorrow and not what should have been done in February. There's plenty of time in November, October, when the campaign is on to deal with that. Yeah. you When you were governor, you spent a lot of time here in Chemung County and uh, and with the amazing people here in the Southern Tier. Um, and they're really rallying against each other. The citizens have really been stepping out. What would have been be a message that you would say uh, to the people of New York in the midst of this crisis? You know, Zach, uh, what has always gotten through, uh, got, gotten us through every crisis are the people, the people who just go about their lives and do their jobs. And, you know, I was being asked by the media, don't you think the political officials are getting tired? And, well, sure. But how about those healthcare workers who are putting in 16 hour days, sometimes working 24 hours and under dangerous circumstances? How about the grocery clerks? who are meeting hundreds of people a day, not knowing what they may have been exposed to, but they're keeping us fed, or the truckers who are bringing in those supplies to New York City. Uh, yes, we need good leadership and we need coordination at all levels of government, but what gets us through a crisis like this are the ordinary people, the people like you have in Chemung County, the people we have on the Southern Tier and in this state, uh, and just uh, follow the guidelines, uh, obey the rules, Think not just of yourself, but of what your actions are doing that could affect others. And give thanks to those going about their jobs, whether it's in a grocery store or in a truck or in a healthcare care uh, facility. Uh, they're the heroes that come from every walk of life that make uh, the Southern Tier and make the United States such a great country. That's right. You mentioned your book, and I had uh, it's, it seems very interesting, especially in the midst of this crisis, the political divide. Tell me a little bit about the, um, the book. Yeah, it's uh, Beyond the Great Divide. It comes out tomorrow. Uh, okay. And I wanted to tell this story 
of uh, September 11th and of the rebuilding of Lower Manhattan because it's one of the things that I take great pride in when I go to Lower Manhattan and see what we have done down there. And I tell the story of how that came about, and what inspired it and how we did it. But at the same time, I tell the political story of how we were so united then and how we're so divided now and how in Washington, they have to understand that the American people are rightfully distrustful of our federal government because it seems that it's always about a party's interest or a political person's power as opposed to what's right for the people. So I talk about some potential solutions and we have to get united again. We have to understand we're not Republicans or Democrats in a crisis, we're Americans uh, and work together. And this will be behind us and we can rise to new heights and I'm confident uh, that we will. That's great. It sounds like a, a very interesting read. Is there one, I know it's not a simple way um, or a simple answer, but what would be one of the ways that we could really unite? Well, I think we saw it with the, the third uh, stimulus bill, the $2.2 trillion package. Uh, Republicans and Democrats came together. They both had to give things on both sides that, that they didn't want. Uh, but we ended up with a bill that will help small businesses, that will help families, that will help get us through the economic uh, crisis as well as the health care crisis. Uh, so when the will is there, the ability is there. Just stop with the politics. Don't look back and try to blame people for what happened in February. Try to help us solve problems in April and May. Yeah, that's wonderful. Governor, I don't want to keep your time. Any final um, final thoughts, uh, especially for the people of New York or the people of this area? Uh, just Zach, you know, I'll tell you, I, I always loved going and visiting Chemung County in the Southern Tier and uh, and always inspired by the people and the beauty. And uh, uh, just keep the faith, uh, follow the guidelines, believe in yourself, believe in your community, believe in our country. And we're going to get through this. And it's a tough road and we're not down the road that far yet. But at the end, there will be a rainbow one of these days and we can all smile. Yes, we can. Governor Pataki, thank you so much uh, for joining me and taking time. And I look forward to your book, which comes out tomorrow. Very exciting. Wow. You're on a great divide. Thanks, Zach. Thank Appreciate you, it. sir. Have, be safe Thank and you. healthy. You too. Bye-bye.